Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. <laughs> so, guys, we're going to look at some earth changes, along with a few other things that are interesting. Lots of stuff happening out there. Yep. Um, Jam-packed news day. Just want to get you guys caught up on this. Here we go again. Let's hope not. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> ERCOT conservation alert. Texans asked to reduce electric use through Friday. Yes. And you know, we have our first serious heat wave of the summer uh, coming on through. And, you know, technically it's not quite summer yet. I, I'm lost as far as days. I think today's the 14th, right? Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Today's the 14th. So we got a week until the solstice. And meanwhile, we have the electric reliability or unreliability <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> Council of Texas, which controls the flow of about 90% of the power in Texas. Mm -mm. You know, that, that feels like that shouldn't be, you know, it's all your eggs in one basket there. Asking residents to conserve power through Friday as temperatures in the state surge. The council says the power grid will likely be tighter due to a high number of forced generation outages. Monday afternoon data from ERCOT indicates forecasted demand may exceed capacity during peak heat hours in the afternoon, and it's not expected to change much during the week with temperatures close to 100 degrees. So that's not good when your demand's exceeding capacity. And we had talked to you guys about this before, back when the big freeze happened, Cindy asked the guides, um, was it likely to happen again? And she got that not only was the cold freeze, which was artificially flavored with a certain uh, Asian buffet flavoring, let's mm -hmm. say, mm -hmm. uh, seasoning <laughs> the cold snap, that it'll happen more times next year. It, it'll be something that we're going to have to prepare for. But she also got back then, when the cold snap came, that there was going to be a repeat in the summer with the inverse, with the heat waves. Mm -hmm. And so we need to be prepared there as well. And, and we were talking in this morning's video about temperatures in Phoenix that might get pretty close to 120. Vegas, like 114. Uh, Austin's over 100. You know, it's it's pretty intense temps that we're, we're seeing out there. And in Texas, you know, the question came up from one of our family members who was saying that it seems to be a lot of downed um, windmills that aren't generating. Why not? Mm -hmm. and, and here we see uh, that there is there is the possibility of some outages again, guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is. So, you know, do what you do to prepare as best you can. Most people are not in the ideal situation, so you have to do what you can do for yourself as best as you can. Yeah, most definitely. So steps to conserve energy. ERCOT is asking people to do the following. Set thermostats to 78 or higher. Turn off lights and pool pumps. Avoid using larger appliances like washers, dryers, ovens. If you don't need something, we're asking that you turn it off and unplug it if possible. Interesting. And of course, there is the February freeze fiasco that we went through that actually claimed the lives of over 300 people. And I don't know if we'll ever really know the true number mm -hmm. when it comes to that. And then meanwhile, over here, we see significant heat wave developing over Europe after an unusually cold spring, the wild extremes. Heat forecast to persist through the end of June, reaching 35 Celsius, 95 Fahrenheit in some places or even higher. First countries to feel the change will be northern Spain, the entire France, and Germany through the 14th, followed by unusually high temperatures in Switzerland, part of Australia, or Austria, I should say. Austria, very, very different. Uh, on June 15th, and then hot temperatures are then expected to settle over most of France and Germany, spreading northeast towards Poland, the Baltic Sea, Lithuania, Belarus, and further northeast by June 19th. The worst is expected to be over Germany, northern Italy, Corsica, and Sardinia on the 20th, and then briefly over entire France on the 25th, moving eastward towards the Balkan Peninsula. The other thing we are seeing, remember, I mean, we've seen some amazing sinkholes, have we not? I mean, mm -hmm. all over the place. 
And here you see a huge sinkhole burst open near underwater blowhole in South Australian coast. This one measures about 40 feet wide, likely to collapse even more. And we're seeing them all over the place. Huge cracks in the ground, fissure in the antique Philippines facing Negro's Trench, a subduction zone, or is the big one building up? You know, that's that's not what you want to wake up to. Mm -mm, you know? No, not that crooked of a bed. Honey, it was a heck of a night, but <laughs> That's something a seems much. wrong here. Yes. Yeah, look at that. This house almost swallowed up by one of the cracks in the ground. Approximately 200 residents have been evacuated uh, in this area as cracks continue to expand. It gets me thinking about expanding Earth and, you know, the mud floods again. And our good friend David Devine, DAP 2030 again, he's expecting that we really could have a mud flood scenario, 2024, 2025. Look at this. Mm -hmm. This is wild. Look at that, you know. I wonder how rapidly it, it set in. I mean, as the case you go to sleep, rumbling, bumbling, things are shaking. You go take a step outside and whoa. Right. Right, look at that. That's pretty crazy. I hope that pup doesn't. All in. Yeah, that one's slowly crunching that house. The cracks destroyed eight houses, partially damaged nine others as well. Well, the changes are here. They are all around us. And then, yes, of course, the rainy weather, soggy, soggy ground. It's all adding up. And by the way, this car's had a bad day. Mm. This car sinks in Mumbai parking lot sinkhole after heavy rains. Going gone. <laughs> I know. What do you do when you walk out of the store? You see something like that. This is wild. And meanwhile, we had talked about this lake over in Mexico, the second biggest lake in Mexico. Uh, it's gone. It, it's just gone. It's just abandoned fish boats. There's no wow. more fish to be had there for sure. Mm -mm. You know, it's it's down to less than 200 cubic meters of water. So it's, you know, a big massive lake turned into a puddle, basically. The water disappearance also creates frequent and prolonged dust clouds. Thinking dust bowl. Mm -hmm. This is very ominous, sometimes reached near nearby communities, affecting the health of residents as well, causing allergies, respiratory illnesses, and gastrointestinal complications from the bacteria that it transports. Hmm. That's pretty ominous looking. Mm -hmm. And that is in Mexico. And then we jump over to Des Moines, Iowa, and we have water officials calling for water use reduction as you know this drought is spreading and it's spreading across the northern tier states now uh, even more it's not just the west uh yet you know of course some areas like we were talking about new orleans six times uh the average annual rainfall already so you got a combination of high demand and low water flow and you know this this is really again it's it's an all too perfect storm and you see here major summer storm hits greece with a month's worth of rain in 40 minutes mm. a month's worth of rain in 40 minutes that's like just dumping the water on them we know the technologies out there guys mm -hmm. we know the technologies out there this doesn't really have to be and, and i know most of you in this family feel the same way so Niwa releases figures for historical one in 200 year event in Canterbury, New Zealand. And that's the uh, pre preliminary analysis by their scientists showed that that severe weather event in Canterbury, New Zealand from May 29th to 31st was so extreme in some inland areas, it could be considered a one in 200 year event. And we've talked about these cycles and most definitely there's natural cycles. Um, you know, a lot of questions going on out there we're talking about you know the the changes the sun feels different it definitely feels different mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know um 
and there's all the other possibilities of things out there, you know, from Planet X, Nibiru, uh, the Dragon of Mother Shipton. What actually is it? Yeah, that was interesting too because it hit me about Mother Shipton's dragon. I mean, it's, it's usually been interpreted to be a comet or a series of comets. But I saw some solar flares recently that really resembled a Chinese dragon. And I started to wonder, I wonder if there could be the possibility that what they're talking about uh, is is related also to the sun's eruptions, mm -hmm. you know, in a series of eruptions. But then, of course, you know, the dragon's tail pulling things down. And then that's revelation as well. Hmm. Interesting stuff that we see. Tropical storm Kaguma floods 20,000 hectares of farmland in Vietnam, up to a foot of rain in 24 hours. And, of course, this is, again, damaging crops and that's that's just adding to the woes across the planet damage from the flooding was mostly limited to farmlands and crops yeah go figure yeah the all too perfect storm yeah. going on and on and on powerful storm leaves the trail of destruction over in spain as well microburst with hurricane force winds this happened in northern spain uh you have all the usual things going on, damaged property, broken trees, flooded streets. One of the province worst in recent years. Uh, and we've seen, you know, flood states, flood stages nonstop. You know, I think the whole time we've been in uh, this particular area, there's just been nonstop river flood warnings. It, it's never stopped. It, it's just a permanent fixture. Mm -hmm. Mumbai soaked by six months worth of rain in five days in India. We see a repeating pattern here, do we not? And we have that increased seismic activity going on over in Michoacan uh, is a sign of imminent eruption in the volcanic field that is there. So we're going to have to see what happens there. Will we have some brand new volcanoes? being formed in these times, I think that's going to be a given. Mm -hmm. Asteroid 2021 LG5 flew past Earth at a little less than half of a lunar distance. 65th one so far in less than six months. You know, 100 is a relatively busy year, and you know we're on path for probably 140, 150. And here you see a daytime meteor fireball over rosario argentina and we have a bolide over the mediterranean sea as well and there's video there over fluid mediterranean sea the bolide was generated by a rock from a comet that hit the atmosphere at 145,000 kilo kilometers an hour at least that's what they tell us again And we have snow falling in the middle of June in Iceland. Let it snow, let it snow, oh let it snow. Oh my gosh. Wow. Might, might as well keep the Christmas ornaments up if you're living in Iceland. Absolutely, yeah. And isn't it interesting, too, that Iceland's mostly green and Greenland's mostly ice? I never understood that in school, but it, since there was opposites, it did help me remember. Well, changing times. And, and the thing is, the question is, how fast do these changes happen? Yes. Mystery noise and bright lights wake up Tasmania. Was it a meteorite? Was it an earthquake? Did the plane go sonic? And we were talking about this before off the San Diego coast that turns out to be uh, a plane, you know, military plane. So unmistakable rumble and a sonic boom. Meteorite? Hmm. Very similar to what happened two years ago when one passed over Tasmania and landed into the sea south of Australia. Ooh, these, these times, I mean, these signs, signs, signs. We have all mm -hmm. the signs in the sky that you could possibly want. A mysterious blinking object has been detected in our galaxy's center. Mm -hmm. ET phone home? Yep. All, <laughs> these, all these mysteries. Who'd have ever thunk? Well, you know, 25,000 light years from Earth. You know, that 25,000 is so close to uh, procession of the equinoxes. And then, of course, we have the what appears to be major catastrophic events that happen um, for sure. If you have those intervals, like every 12,000, 12,500 years thereabouts. And then also 
big ones every 6,000 years. Uh, as we've said, again, it's all, all related to cycles, yes. But are there beings taking advantage of natural cycles and, you know, putting in their, uh, you know, artificial flavoring or their, their testosterone boosts, yeah, so to speak? I would think so. Well, this is a star, and it could belong to a new class of star. Giant beasts over 100 times the sun that are eclipsed by a mysterious orbiting body once every few decades. So uh, perhaps a binary system is kind of what they're getting at of a giant magnitude star. And we're going to finish with, again, you know, people seem to be going somewhere. Everybody seems like they want to go somewhere. There's this big urge for so many people to move as, as we are entering these times. Where do you want to ride out the storm? Well, tons of people with some wealth are heading to Montana, and they're driving the prices up through the roof. You know, Montana is one of those places that you might think it's great to survive a, a zombie apocalypse or, you know, any other sort of catastrophic events. Um, you know, the average selling price of a home in Flathead County has now risen to more than $638,000. Bidding wars. Hordes of individuals with money from L.A., San Francisco, New York, and other major cities are heading into this area. I know, you know, Idaho has had a huge boost of people also from... California, Washington, Oregon, you know, leaving the area. A lot of that is also politically politically motivated. Mm -hmm. But, you know, wow, look at those prices, $638,000. Yep, it's quite a lot. Quite a lot, yes. Yeah, that's something that, that, you know, if you just think back to, well, when we were kids growing up, you never saw numbers like that. Oh, no, not even near. No, no. but again, it depends on where you want to go and mm -hmm. if you are able to re remotely work and you can't go anywhere well you know there's some places that are bargains and you know the the least expensive states in the country uh are mississippi is the least expensive state in the country uh arkansas i believe is number two and then you could add into the mix some other states like Oklahoma is, is I believe, number three. And, you know, southern Missouri is pretty inexpensive, too. And, you know, the Ozarks, that's a great place to ride out. Mm -hmm. Many people believe that is a great place to ride out the storms that are ahead. And I tell you, you could get a ton for 638000 in fact, you, you could probably find a decent house there on a few acres to homestead for maybe one hundred and fifty, mm -hmm. you know, thousand dollars. So you know, it, it all depends on your flexibility mm -hmm. and if you're able to work remotely. But a ton of people are heading to Montana. Oh yeah, they are. And beautiful country, but can get pretty cold. It can get pretty cold and, and also probably surprisingly warm. You get the extremes mm -hmm. when you go inland like that, like the Dakotas. Mm -hmm big time temperature swings so guys as always thanks for being a part of the uh family here and if you did find this informative do thumbs up support the channel make sure you are subscribed and have the bell click to both channels thanks for your support on ko-fi and patreons uh, we really couldn't do it without your guys support in those areas as well and if you need to make an appointment it's evolutionaryenergyarts at gmail.com or eearts at protonmail.com as always, be prepared. God bless and namaste. Namaste.